So if you older ones can learn to put your own gas masks on, then it'll save the nurse a rush around the whole ward when the siren goes, won't it? I expect you'll be having gas mask drill once in a while, and there's nothing to be frightened of. Now, let's see if yours is working properly. Take a good deep breath. Breathe in. Good girl. Yes. You'll be all right. We don't quite know when to expect the war. There may be months yet to get ready in. But if Hitler knows we're ready for him, and that's what ARP's all about, air raid precautions, then he may decide not to send his pilots to get shot down, just to drop poison gas on people who are well protected against it. So you may never need these. Let's hope not. Only write your name on the case so as we know whose it is. Come and get some pencils. Now, nurse, what about the babies? June 1939. War against Germany now seems inevitable. The government has issued millions of free gas masks in case Hitler should drop gas bombs. Over a quarter of a million of us have received our Anderson shelters. These easily constructed corrugated steel huts in sections, which are buried in the garden, are just big enough for a small family to sleep in. If Hitler's bombers do come over, we must all remember this drill. We shall have some warning of air raids. When we hear the siren, we must stop whatever we are doing and take cover. There are public shelters in the town centres and basements have been reinforced. Those at home should go to the Anderson shelter, not forgetting gas masks. Then, wait for the all clear. If it is a gas attack, the warden will warn you with a gas rattle. We must take these precautions to keep death and injury to a minimum and reduce pressure on our hospitals and medical services. I can't see for close work as well as I used to. Wonder if I ought to buy a pair of specs. There, I've finished. Thanks. Glasses are quite cheap, aren't they? Wait a moment. Yes, here. Six shillings. Or new bifocals, 19 and sixpence. Cool, I'm not paying that. You may need them. You need a telephone more. Feel embarrassed, keep using yours all the time. Every day a message since Arthur joined the ARP. Goodness, we don't mind. It's important. We're saving up to have our own telephone put in. The glasses can wait. Mm, just listen to that lot. Pure bedlam. <laughs> it isn't in my pocket. Queenio, Queenio, who's got the ball? Every will clap over your head. Jenny, wrong. Yunus has got it. No, 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 if the flag day raises enough money, there might be a new ward at the hospital for consumptives. Even if they've got families to look after them, it must be a strain watching them getting gradually worse at home. And no medicines on hand to relieve the coffin. I thought patients with consumption could go into Bradley General Infirmary. Yes, they can, but they won't. It's too closely connected to the workhouse. Especially the old folk. They won't accept a bed in there if they can help it. Strange. The children are quiet. Perhaps they've quarrelled. Mm. Well, they may have gone over the fence into our garden. Mummy. I spoke too soon. Rebecca's not feeling very well, Mrs. Remington. What, you darling? What's the matter? Oh, dear. Where does it hurt? My head's hot. She does feel feverish. Oh, I hope it's only a chill. Avril, don't come too near, love. Oh, if she's going to catch anything, she'll have caught it by now. Come on, old pet. The best place for you is in bed. It may be only a chill. The Pollock children are all down with it now. And Leonard Butler and Mavis and Barry Carpenter. They should have closed the school. I think he got scarlet fever too then, Mum. I don't know, but... Oh, Mabel, I'm sorry. Oh, for... don't worry. Avril doesn't mind being in quarantine. Cheer up, love. You may be better in the morning. Mm -hmm. I don't 
don't see how the dancers can be expected to get it right when the choir doesn't. It's not fair keeping us late when I wanted to get all my weekend homework done fast. Is anything special happening for your birthday? Jimmy's taking me and Avril to First House Pictures tomorrow to see, guess what? Snow White! Oh, you love it! It's amazing! <laughs> Full length in colour. What lovely music. Oh, I could see it again. Well, why don't you come with us? We'll be queuing outside the Odeon from half past four. Well, what do Jimmy mind? Doubt it. Quite likes you. Does he? Oh, how awful. Oh, gosh, Mum said I wasn't to go to the pictures till the epidemic's over. Oh, that's daft. You can just as easily pick up germs in a shop or on the tram. Where is my rotten hat? Oh, this isn't mine either. Recently, juniors have been in and moving around again. Harriet Stokes. Doreen Wallace, been in. Oh, easy, was. Oh, Tom. I hope I pass maths. Oh, I shall. What's the point in being good at one subject? Fail one, you may as well fail them all. No school certificate. Well, not to worry. We've got a year left. Here's yours on Marion's peg. So where's hers? Oh, somebody's probably gone home in it by mistake. Hey, Tricia, what if I tell Mum you and I are playing tennis tomorrow? Then I can meet you outside the pictures. She'll never know. Well, it's up to you. But you know you get spots on your tongue if you tell lies. It's worth it. Your father said the Anderson shelters would be here soon. Oh dear. I'm so looking forward to a restful weekend. Oh, chance. Will you give me a hand building hours? Expect so. You'll have to move them from there, love. Your dad wants to plant his bottle of beans there. Hello, David. Hello. How's Rebecca? Oh, we've telephoned to the doctor. Have I uh, offended Jimmy? Oh, he's not on speaking terms with anyone at the moment. <laughs> I know those things are meant to protect us, but I'm not sure we wouldn't be a lot safer under the stairs. Well, if there isn't a war, we can always use them as garden sheds. <laughs> oh, we can't. They look terrible. <laughs> Have you heard any more from your cousins in New York? Hmm, yes. Yes, they're hoping to arrange a partnership with a dental practice for him. We'll miss you. It'll be a wrench for us. It's sensible. If war breaks out. We may leave, we may stay. I mean, for myself, I'd stay and fight. But, well, for my Sarah and Rebecca, I've at least got to see them safe. Uh, we've not said anything to Rebecca yet. We shan't tell Avril. She'll be upset. Well, you're 15 years old tomorrow. You must have some idea of what you want to be. Well, Mary Halliwell's going to work for her dad as a secretary. Not keen on spending the rest of my life in an office, though. What if you trying to be a teacher like Mother? Dad, that takes years. Anyway, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in a classroom, either. The rest of your life? It's only to find a husband, love. I shan't do that. Why not? She's too ugly. Oh, there's no smoking. What would you like for your birthday, Tricia? I'd like to be very beautiful and very grown up. Mum, can I have my hair bobbed? Oh, not yet, love. Flats are neat and tidy. I don't want you coming home looking like a dish mop. Is a piece of jam tart spare, Jimmy? No. No what? No, thank you. Arthur, why the men first? Because they need the energy to dig a great hole in the garden. I can dig. Oh, let her out. David's coming in to help us on Saturday. They've been good neighbours, you know. I'll be sorry if it... Never thought I'd find myself living next door to a professional man. There's all sorts of Westmore Avenue. Mm -hmm. I didn't realise it till I started ARP work. I don't want to anymore. That's unusual. Can you manage it, Edward? Yes. Good boy. <laughs> I just think I'm poor too. Well, of course. I've probably expected that. Rebecca starts taking the beano, so you have to buy the beano. Rebecca has puff sleeves, so you have to have puff sleeves. Rebecca has an auntie in America, so you invent one that nobody in this family has ever heard of. Of course, you have to be a poly, too. But I am honestly. My throat's sore. I expect it's your tonsils acting up again. We'll have to get them seen to one day. You look right as rain to me. This one I'm interested in. Oh, I'm not interested in Jimmy. What? Yeah. Well, you might as well get on with it. 
Come on, you can't pull the wool over my eyes. I'm fine. You've had no appetite and a funny temper all this week. He's got toothache. Tell tale. Have you? In a bit. Well, why didn't you say? It'll pass. I'm spending hours having my teeth filled, and besides, I can't afford it. Not from taking them two to the pictures tomorrow. You'll afford it if we say you should. I've never heard anything so silly. Mr Levinson won't charge much to us. He's very kind. He doesn't look kind. But he's leaning over his helpless victim with a great big drill in his hand. This is easily dealt with. Promise me I'll have your teeth looked at next week. Otherwise, no Snow White tomorrow. Oh, I can't. Well, you can't go anyway. Why? You're poorly. I'm not. I'm better. All of a sudden, she's better. Jimmy. I promise. Now I see what you've done, Telltale. The good man not to take you. Tomorrow, Jewish Sabbath or not. I'll deal with that tooth, Jimmy. It's not hurting. Honest. years of age, you're old enough to decide whether you want your food to spoil. Just one, quickly. Where's Jimmy? Not up yet. He's been awake half the night. Will he be able to take her to the pictures? I hope so. We'll see. What's in your parcel, love? Snowfire powder cream. What got me this? Yes, you're silly enough to buy your stuff to put on your face. Me? Oh, Dad, you're wonderful. Oh, Arthur, really? Well, She's not grown up yet. It's only for parties and special occasions, <laughs> when she's nattering about her freckles spoiling her looks. <laughs> what shade is it? Naturel. Well, I suppose you can wear naturel. No lipstick, though. Respectable, healthy girls don't need to put paint on their faces. Hello, can I come in? Yes, come in, Sarah. What's the news? Oh, I'd better keep my distance. Rebecca's covered in a red rash. <laughs> Many happy returns, Patricia. Oh, thank you, thank Mrs. Lane. Isn't that nice? Um, there's a telephone message for Arthur. Another consignment of gas masks has arrived, and he is to distribute them to the residents of numbers 21 to 87 Grimshaw Crescent. Grimshaw Crescent. Thanks. Oh, Lord, Mrs. Battersby. Oh. <laughs> She'll not take kindly to it. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Well, Jimmy's calling. I heard. And David said, would Jimmy let him try to cure that toothache today? Oh, thanks. We didn't like to ask, not on a Saturday. After synagogue. He couldn't let Jimmy suffer all weekend. Thank you, Sarah. Um, when are they taking Rebecca into the isolation hospital? Oh, didn't I say? She can stay at home. It's only German measles. <laughs> she thinks it's another of Adolf Hitler's little tricks. <laughs> Come on. It's not too hot, not too cold, only tepid. Won't make your teeth jump. I'll be late for work. You're not going to work. Not with a face like a balloon and no sleep. But won't I get the sack? Of course not. Your dad says boys your age are insured now, just like grown men. You'll get that toothache fixed and you'll get yourself fit again. That's what you'll do. And if it's to be a long course of treatment and we have to pay, there's always the telephone money. Oh, it's one of them. No, thanks, lad. But it's for your own safety, Mrs. Battersby. Not today. If you can stop a while, there'll be a nice bit of jam sponge. Uh, where's your ear trumpet? Eh? Where's your ear... I just want to see if your gas mask fits, and then you're to take it with you everywhere you go when war's declared. Very kind, I'm sure, but I don't think I'll bother. Oh, no, you, you have to put it on when the siren goes. Air raid warning. Oh, I don't, I don't suppose you'd hear the siren. How am I to manage my walking stick and my shopping bag and all that lot? <laughs> Please, Mrs. Battersby. Oh, all right. You'll none be suited if I don't buy one, will you? How much? 
It's free. I've got my widow's pension. I can pay. I'm not a pauper. Oh, I know you're not. But it's free. It's a present from the government. Eh? Where's Mum? Outside Woolies selling flags. Where's Dad? Giving out gas masks. Where's Jimmy? At Mr Levinson's surgery. There's only me and Edward. What are you doing? I'm trying to write a letter to Claudine. She sent me a box of real French nugget for my birthday. I'll give you a piece while you go away. I don't want any. My throat's scratchy. La neige blanche et les sept petillons. Just don't sound right. I don't know the French for dwarf, and I can't remember whether Snow's feminine or masculine. Mm. Snow White's a girl, though. I don't want to go to the pictures anyway. Oh, Avril, will you stop being such a misery just because Rebecca can't play for a while? But I've got Jimmy Mizzles, too. Not no Hitler. Mm. Mm. Avril! So I made her under her front, and I couldn't find any spots on her chest. So then I took her temperature, and it was right up on the thermometer. And when I looked in her mouth, her throat was red raw. So I made a gargle and sent her to bed, and she didn't argue. Oh, she must be ill, Mum. Trouble with Avril is she's too much like the boy who cried wolf. Well, I didn't want to send for the doctor without asking. No. It's a guinea every time he comes, and half a guinea when I take her to the surgery. It's always the same story. Tonsils are septic again. We ought to just pay for the operation. We can't keep putting it off. We could always use the telephone money. Yes, of course we could. Has your mouth stopped bleeding? Nearly, thanks. Feels great. Oh, thank goodness. Listen, would you two mind putting off Snow White till Avril's better? She'll be ever so disappointed to miss it. Oh, Mum. Well, never mind. Oh. You can always have another birthday next week. Yeah, I suppose so. Then we can ask Rebecca and Mary Halliwell. Oh. What? Nothing. Hello? May I come in? Yes, come in, Sarah. There's a telephone message from Mrs. Halliwell to tell Patricia that Mary won't be able to play tennis with her this afternoon. That's odd. Must have been a model. How do you arrange to play tennis with Mary Halliwell? No, I don't think so. And did Mother say why, Mrs. Levinson? She sounded thoroughly disgusted. Mary's to have her hair cut off and shampooed with some foul mixture. Such a lovely looking girl. She's got knits. Knits? Oh, dear. Such a lovely girl. Pretty, nitty Mary. You shut up. It's not her fault when the hats get moved around. What? Where's those glasses? Well, you've treated yourself to a pair of spectacles, then. Yes, I popped into Woolworths after I finished selling my flags. You never paid only sixpence. Well, nothing over sixpence is stretching it a bit. Come on, Trisha, sit here. It's sixpence each lens and sixpence for the frames. And I had to try a lot of pairs on before I found a pair I could see better with. Oh, no. You can undo in your plaits, Trisha. I'll get the scissors. You're absolutely cruel. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank goodness we found them at home before the knit nurse discovered them at school. It's shame-making. What a lovely birthday present, Trisha. Knit. Knitty Patricia. This is even better than Snow White. Why? You heard, Mum. She's going to let me have short hair. It's what I wished for at breakfast. To be all grown up with a beautiful powdery face and no pigtails. Was she... A book accompanying this series of How We Used to Live has been published by MacDonald Educational.